One of the things about structure that I found that sort of changed more than anything for me because I didn't realize this for the first 10 or 15 years that I was a consultant and lecturer, and that is I always thought of plot structure, I meaning it was the sequence of events and the things that happened and that's sort of externally. So this need, and it is, it is a plot structure and there are certain key things that need to happen at 25% and 50% and 75. But the revelation to me was when I realized that the inner journey the character takes also has a structure and it's exactly the same structure. You cannot judge your character. In fact, you have to think of yourself as your character's attorney. Oh, wow. You have to plead your case or the case of the character to the audience. You can't do that if you're judging the character. Um, and I took that with acting and I also took that into my writing as well. You know, everybody is coming from a place where they think they're doing the right thing. We as the audience jump onto the screen and become the protagonist in the story. And a good story has some sort of a fantasy, and it doesn't have to be a positive fantasy, that we want to explore in our life. So we skin jump and we are Elliot riding his bicycle with E.T. and it flies. You know, and that is like one of those moments where if you were to turn the camera on the audience and watch, with, watch the audience, they would all be just overjoyed because we're all Elliot in that scene for that moment. And if we're looking at a movie that's a, a we're, we can become Indiana Jones and do the amazing adventure thing. And we basically jump from the audience onto the screen, which means we need a character to jump into. And a good story is about a character that fulfills some sort of uh, dream fulfillment, some sort of fantasy the audience has. And a, the reason why a film is a hit is because it ends up hitting the dream fulfillment elements of a lot of people. And so if you can figure out the zeitgeist of what the audience, what people are dreaming about right now, that's that thing that's going to pull us onto the screen. The first thing you have to understand about dialogue is that it's got to be connected to the character's desire line in the scene. In other words, it, if a character has an objective, an intention in the scene, the dialogue has to match that intention. And what I see a lot of times, especially with exposition and information, is that a character is saying all that information and you can tell that it's really the writer's objective. In other words, the writer wants, to, wants the audience to know this information because they think, okay, the audience needs to know this and this and this and this, so the character is going to say this and this and this and this. And that doesn't work because scenes and dialogue are about a character's intention in the scene. Everything a character says is matched to what that desire line is. The device by which we make a character sympathetic is to show their wounds because as human beings, we're not gonna be interested in good looking, perfect people who are making a lot of money and they're great and everything they do. Who gives a We wanna see people that we can identify with because that's not us. We've got problems, right? I've got problems, right? I wanna see my problems and somebody else with problems dealing with problems, okay? And you can say, well, you know, a show like, um, like uh, Riverdale doesn't do that, but they do. And, and there's <laughs> fantasy shows, uh, absolutely fantasy shows where, where that's not the case. But most of the time, you do wanna see a wound. That's what likability really means. Oh, they're like me. They're screwed up. They don't have it all together. Wish I did. Maybe they'll get it together. A story, there's a connection where between the parts, this happens, which leads to that happening which makes it ironic when this other thing happens. Uh, there's a connection between the parts. Uh, another way I can put it is if I can take your protagonist out of your script and put a completely different one in, and maybe with a couple of tweaks, it works just as well. You have a situation, my friend, not a story. Interesting. I shouldn't be able to do that. If you're telling a story, if I were to take your protagonist out, it would no longer work. A story is unique to your protagonist. There's something, there's a unique journey, a reason why you 
the master of the universe here, has put this character on this path. There's something in that character that you've chosen to do this particular plot in order to bring out something in them. And so if I can put just another character in it, it works just as well. That's not a situation. That's not testing anything specific to the character. It's just an arbitrary situation that you put a character, you put someone into. And that's what most people do. I mean, that's the way a lot of us start. It's, it's not, you know, I don't mean to, um, it, it doesn't mean that it's not a fixable situation. I think one of the biggest mistakes is jumping into something that's not going to teach us anything. So it doesn't matter to the story, but you think it's cool. <laughs> right? So understanding that those first few pages are about the setup. Right, so this is, this is me gathering information about the character, about the world, about, you know, I'm gonna start making assumptions about what's gonna happen. I'm not looking for the inciting incident on page one, but I am looking for things that are intentional and things that are gonna help me understand at least who this character is. So that's why you'll see a lot of action films open with an action scene because you're teaching me the skills that this protagonist has. You're teaching me that they know how to fight, they're usually the good, the good guy, they're usually the winners, or whatever other information that you need me to know. And so now, when the inciting incident does happen, and they say, you're gonna have to go off and save the world, I believe they can do it, because you've already shown me that they can. Writing is a process of questions. That like, if I could, there's a couple of things that I wish I could like get tattooed on the inside of people's eyelids that they knew. Think in scenes, and writing is a process of questions. It's not a thing you have to fill out. It's not a form that you have to fit into. Writing is a question, is always a process of having something. It could be just, I wanna write a Western, or I wanna talk about how love hurts, or I wanna talk about how love saved my life. Whatever it is that you start with, then you start to ask questions. How am I gonna tell this story? Am I gonna tell it through a character who gets it or a story who doesn't get it? Everything is gonna be a choice. Every question that you ask, if you write down that question, how am I gonna tell this story? Who is the main character? Everything is a question and those questions are, who is it about? What do they want? Why can't they get it? What do they do about that? Why doesn't that work? How does it end? Those six questions basically will help you write anything. Transformation in a story is a key element and whether it comes through your main character or your main character changing um, everyone else, it doesn't matter. It's just that transformation is actually the purpose of a story. It's actually the purpose of a story because the reason we tell stories is to actually understand ourselves better. And that insight is a transformation for us. Now that you have sort of uh, loaded up your, with equipment and reassurance and you know where you're going, you know what you want, you've faced your fear, you've been reassured, now it's time to get up and go. And uh, when I was working for the movie studios, especially for Disney, they talked about this like an airplane taking off. And they said, you've spent all this time in what they call the first act, the first three or four or five movements, uh, those first steps, you've loaded the plane up and you've fueled the plane and you've told everybody to belt their seat belts and you know, all the safety things. Now, get the wheels up and get the plane in the air. So uh, this is the feeling of lifting up that you get when all the preparation is ready and now we're going into that new world or special world as Joseph Campbell calls it. He says every story he ever looked at seems to take place in two worlds, either environments or states of being, uh, two different states of condition. So now we're gonna really launch into that special world. And this is a big turning point in a story uh, that signals the audience, all the prep is done, now we're really going for it. And the audience likes that and they feel a nice lift there. And sometimes it's backed up by changing the music or the change in the energy of the scene to say, we're leaving Kansas, we're leaving the ordinary world, and now we're going someplace very, very different and exotic.